share stream. I could. Okay. Huh. Hi, good evening. Sorry for Hi, Todd. No, good. Nick of time. It's perfect timing. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And um, I think Leah will probably be here in a bit. So, okay. First thing on the agenda is report from the Friends of the Bloomfield Public Library. Um, Penny? Thank you. Uh, I just have one quick thing. Um, the uh, Friends book sale leaders are working closely with Elizabeth and her staff to plan an early June book sale in an exciting new way. So stay tuned to see what that's gonna be all about. And I do, Elizabeth, appreciate your time and the time of your staff and really helping us to craft something exciting. That's it. Thank, thank you, Penny. I think it's gonna be an exciting kickoff. Okay, well, thanks, Penny. And of course, now we all are dying to know exactly what's going on. And it's a good reminder for me to get the rest of those books out of my living room. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm down to only about 14, 15 more bags. So, okay. But thank you for your report. That's, that's good. Okay, chairperson's report. So um, once again, I wanna thank Chris for managing the tech and taking minutes um, and always, going above and beyond, yeah, much appreciated. I would like to remind everyone that we have the opportunity to advocate for the library during budget hearings. Um, Leah and I have already um, each testified once and I would really encourage you all to speak out. I, I really think that the council is interested, you know, the new building project is coming. It's, um, it has really made the library kind of more visible so we, we want to make sure that the council is going to help us have what we need inside the library, as well as having a new building. Um, I would like to acknowledge Elizabeth and her staff for their growing role as leaders in the state library community. So you probably all recall that Elizabeth and Allison are going to be presenters at the Connecticut Library Association's annual conference. Elizabeth and Chris are going to be presenters at the CEN conference in May. Um, and members of the Board of Trustees are also, also joining Elizabeth in this work. Because you remember Elizabeth and Leah were invited to serve on a Connecticut Library Consortium panel. And now in May, Maxine and Elizabeth are going to be speakers at the Connecticut Library Association annual conference. That, that there are going to be two conferences from Elizabeth and Max and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Allison at the Library Asso Association conference. That's really, yeah. that, that, that conference is a big deal in the library world. So that's, that's really impressive. I also wanna thank Elizabeth for presenting her testimony um, to the state legislature on the bill concerning electronic book licensing. That is, it's one of those invisible issues that actually is incredibly important. This, this is a bill that would represent significant savings for taxpayers in Bloomfield. Um, the, the, this problem has been kind of ongoing for a while in building. The publishers have tried creative ways to make libraries, including school libraries, as well as public libraries, pay a great deal for eBooks. You know that you you don't just pay the same price for an ebook when you're a library as you do when you're an individual. It's far more expensive, and now they have the bright idea of essentially treating it as a license that you're buying, not the book. So every X number of circulations, you would have to buy that very expensive book again in order to use it. So it is really important for you know. If, if you would like to send your legislator an email and say that this is important to you, that would be a good idea. This, this is a very important bill, even though it's the kind of bill that, you know, it isn't jazzy and people don't pay attention to it, but it has huge economic impact for libraries and for the people that libraries serve. And having said that, let's go on to the director's report, Elizabeth. Thank you, Eva. And that's a good segue in 
to my opening statements about our statistics. Um, we just compiled up to the end of January and our digital CERC um, is again higher than ever with 1,728 items CERC digitally. Um, again, these items tend to be more expensive than physical items uh, because of some of the issues in the publishing world. Um, and again, it was exciting to see this being addressed by our legislature. Um, Maryland, Rhode Island, and New York has, have done similar work, and it's great to see Connecticut being a leader taking this on. This would benefit all taxpayers in the state of Connecticut if it passed. Um, the next uh, important item, and I, when I was coming home tonight, I just saw that CREC is going masking um, optional uh, in two weeks. And I think the time um, has come for the libraries to follow suit. Um, and I was hoping that I could get some feedback um, from the board on when we think we're ready to go mask optional. Um, we're, we are ready. Um, and so I was going to propose April 4th, but now a lot of the dates are rolling back even sooner. So I'm wondering if we should go um, maybe the 14th or the 21st. So I would appreciate some feedback from the board on that. Um, also, we planned on rolling back our opening hours to 10 a.m. in January, but then we had that next horrible wave of COVID. Um, now that we're past that wave, we are looking to um, open up six days a week at both locations at 10 a.m. And we are gonna roll that out April 4. We are just um, working on some of the staffing uh, to make that happen. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I also wanted to note that we continue to still see new library card numbers in, in high numbers. So in January, uh, we had 57 new library card signups. And um, I know we're, for February, it was in the high 60s. So that is really great work on the behalf of BPL staff to make sure that we're empowering our public with the library card. We are also having a lot of program, including re responsive programming. We had a request from somebody to do an Outlander Fan Fest event, and we did that last night, and it was a success. I want to say thank you to Melanie um, for hosting that. We had two staff resignations, one from our page um, time. Uh, her last day was the last snow day we had that we were closed. Um, and then Jane Romanos, uh, who's been with us uh, for around six years. Her last day will be this Friday. Um, and we're sad to see her go, um, but we'll be celebrating her with our joint um, celebra celebration of 2021 this Thursday. We are returning to daycares in April that Mara and Sheila are the ones that primarily do that. We go to BELC, Creative Hearts, New Creations, Crack Head Start, two Crack Head Starts, um, First Academy at First Cathedral and First Congregational. So we're excited to roll that out again. I wanna thank Ava and Leah for speaking up at um, finance and town council meetings. Um, it's really appreciated. And um, I think that when people speak up, it goes further than you even know. So thank you. I wanted to mention that as we uh, become more leaders in the Connecticut library community, um, Sarah serves as the CLC Millennial Programming uh, Roundtable Chair. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a group that we are trying to court more and more here in Bloomfield, and we've been successful, and Sarah's been leading the charge on that. We have also rolled out in-person story times at both libraries. Um, it's on Fridays at Prosser and on Wednesdays at McMahon. And I did have a flyer that I was going to show you about that because we would love it if, again, the board helped us get news out about that. So here's this, the flyer. And this is for March and April as we slowly roll out these services, but we, we do have people asking for it. Um, so we're excited for that. So um, it's for ages. Um, it's for, we recommend it for ages five and under. 
We also are gonna put our strategic plan up at both locations. Um, that document continues to be a guiding document in all of our work, including as we go transition into our swing spaces. Um, and so we're gonna make sure that that's up at all service points. We also just partnered with Dignity Grows um, and the Jewish Federation of Greater Hartford. Um, we're gonna be handing out these bags um, Dignity Grows provides girls, women, and all menstruators with the human dignity that comes from having their most basic personal hygiene needs met one month at a time. There's also a bag for men that includes um, similar products. And I just wanted, this is, this is the women's bag, and anybody can come to any location and ask for it. Then this one includes pads, tampons, uh, deodorant, hand and body wipes, shampoo, toothpaste, and a toothbrush. So we will have those for at both locations. Oh, and a bar of soap. And anybody can come up and we just discreetly hand that out. Um, and uh, we are excited to partner with them and thankful that they thought of us. Um, as they continue to spread this good work. The Library Building Committee has been very busy. Last week, TSKP provided project updates and 3D models. Wednesday night at our Library Building Committee meeting and Thursday night at an open house at McMahon Wittenbury. Uh, we had about 30 people attend um, and there was a lot of great questions and gave us a lot of good stuff to think about. We also have formally started the lead process um, and we were, uh, Alice and I attended a meeting at TSKP as, alongside members of the library building committee, um, TSKP and the lead consultant. Um, so there's a lot of work and thought that goes into that. And we're excited um, to embark on that journey. We received word that we might be up at the bond commission agenda um, to release the million dollar grant um, that we received for Prosser. And uh, I made sure to email our uh, representative Gibson and senators McCrory and Slap um, to encourage them to ensure that we make that March 25 um, agenda. Allison, Chris and I visited the University of Hartford um, and their director, Elizabeth Dill, last Friday to tour their facilities and take a deeper look at the way technology is in their libraries. They've also had a recent renovation um, that was very informative. Chris, Allison, and Quincy, our tech team, visited 330 Park to get an idea of how they rolled out their technology in that building and the pros and cons and things to look out for. That was also with Scott Charlotte. We also toured um, a potential swing space at Old Windsor Federal, and we are looking into deepening our relationship with the Board of Education and Bloomfield Public Schools. Um, and Maxine, Ava, and I uh, had some preliminary talks, as well as Nicole and Heidi. Um, and we're hopeful that that will be a very fruitful relationship and we'll be able to do a lot more um, to make sure that students know uh, what is available from their libraries and create lifelong learners and library users. We are rolling out a new online resource, Comics Plus. It is an excellent resource to build and expand both sequential art collections and public awareness of the for format's diversity and appeal. The content is broad, deep, rich, and nuanced and offers high interest options for dedicated and novice comic readers alike. That's a review from Library Journal. Um, and hold on one second, please. We have a lot of comic readers um, at both locations. And if you know a comic reader, they, they're the type that come in and take 20 books at a time and read them in three days. So it's an impossible thing for us to keep enough of. Um, so this resource I think is really gonna help us um, with those manga and comic readers. We are celebrating his, Women's History Month with a whole host of programs. Um, we've already had one uh, with some docents from the Wadsworth, um, it was excellent. We also had a female 
beer enthusiast who talked about all the female brewers, um, both in the United States and abroad and the history of brewing. Um, it was very interesting. Um, and we have a lot more programs to come for all ages. Um, as Ava said, um, Maxine and I, our conference proposal was accepted. We're going to be speaking alongside uh, librarians and community members from Southington and Coventry, and it's called How We Did It, Three Recent Successful Building Referenda Campaigns. We will be speaking, I believe, on May 3rd. Um, and Chris and I will be speaking at the CEN conference. Um, it's a panel to talk about hotspots and laptops um, that we received with funding from the Connecticut State Library. And we'll be doing that alongside colleagues from Ferguson and Stanford. Um, as Ava said, I testified on behalf of the Connecticut State Library and CREC at the Appropriations Committee public hearing on February 17th, and I also testified in support of an ebook licensing on February 25th, and we're looking forward to some really positive news on that front. And budget workshops, um, that's the most important part of my presentation tonight. Um, um, our town manager is presenting his budget um, this Thursday at 3.30 Park. Um, it starts at seven o'clock and we just received word that that will be hybrid. It will be available on Zoom and in person. Um, and I'll be sure to update all of you with the relevant links. And um, Chris, Allison and I will be presenting next to public safety on behalf of Bloomfield Public Library on March 24th at 7 p.m. Um, let's make sure I don't land there. I know that we had a question from Bev about staffing. Um, and I just wanted to elaborate that. Um, and I wanted to read Chris's formal response. Um, prior to March 2020, Prosser was open 55 hours per week and McMahon was open 42 hours. Currently, both libraries are open 43 hours per week. Um, as of April, we're planning, they'll both be open um, 48 or 49 hours per week. Moving forward, um, the amount of hours open will be the same at both locations. Um, and we're also thinking that when we have the new buildings roll out to the public, we will hopefully have 55 to 60 open hours at each location, including Sundays. Um, and the idea behind that is to make sure that people have access to um, technology seven days a week. Um, the Saturday and Sunday hours will be shorter days, um, probably four hours per day, but we're still working through all of that. Um, and I wanted to thank Maxine for really putting it out there for us to think on a five and 10 year uh, timeline to make sure that we are staffing appropriately moving forward. Um, we also wanted to mention that since the pandemic, service delivery has been especially complicated, um, meaning that even though the libraries were open fewer hours, service hours were much more intensive as we developed and rolled out many new services, um, many of which the community has gotten used to. Um, and also the idea that we're staffing McMahon Wittenberry much more robustly is something that we also need to man maintain. Um, I think the public has gotten used to that and that's, that's a good thing. But um, we just wanted to talk that we've really been thinking through all of that. Um, and that is it for my formal presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank you, oh, quite, a, quite a lot. Um, I really want Elizabeth? to encourage everybody to attend those, um, the budget workshop, particularly when the library presents. Um, we, we, you have the opportunity to go in person and now we're hearing that we will have a chance to use Zoom if we prefer. So um, hopefully everybody can be there, even, even if it's just moral support, council members notice when we do show up or when we don't. So I, you know, it's important to to have as many of us there as possible, whether in person or, or through Zoom, um, you know, to show our support for the library. 
did, did um, somebody have a question? I, I, had, had a I question. did. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted you to know that the reason I asked about the hours the library was open is I was, I was hoping to be able to support more staff, but it got increasingly difficult as I looked at Simsbury, Windsor, other places to figure out how many hours they were open. And then I'd have to call and find out how much staff they have. And I'm not, I'm not sure it's even relevant, but I thought it would be a good, uh, a good point to make if, if we looked good in that area, that indeed they were, we were doing more with less. But I'm not sure that's going to be easy to, to prove at all. Um, it's way too complicated. Everybody's open odd hours and every, some people have extra libraries. And so I, I kind of uh, dropped that. I thought Chris's answer was interesting. And also I especially appreciate the uh, opening at 10. Uh, 11 o'clock is a miserable time to open. Uh, it really is. You're, it's right in the middle of the day. So I, I really appreciate that change. And I think we should be open as much as possible, including the Sunday hours. So I was very interested to hear that. And certainly with those increased hours, I, I think that we can justify more staff. I think we could even now, uh, because I think as uh, Chris pointed out, we do provide a lot more services now than we did prior to COVID. But I just wanted you to know why I asked that question. Uh, my other comment is I think we should uh, have masks optional as soon as possible. I think people that wish to wear them um, will wear them. And I, I, I went without a mask today for the first time. And I, I honestly felt naked. Uh, it was uh, kind of a weird feeling. Uh, and I went in the store and I, I didn't have a mask on. And um, I kind of skulked around trying to stay far away from people. But um, I think the future is um, clear that that we, we really are going to have to live with this in some aspects of it anyway. And so I, I would like to see us uh, go without masks as soon as uh, possible for the library. Anyway, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. And I wanted to let you know that we really appreciate the questions because it helps us prepare answers. And I'd rather hear the questions from the board first than when we're up at council and, and you know, struggling mm -hmm. for an answer. Um, yes, so the mask optional, I think it, it, you know, and especially when I got that correspondence from CREC, that's what we're hearing everywhere. And the health director um, is saying the same thing. Um, um, I also wanted to say that um, I know when Leah presented in front of uh, town council, she brought up some of the numbers from the state report. And one example was Farmington, who's also a two library physical locations. Um, and they have 22.94 FTE equivalent um, as compared, and this is the way the state library does the data. So if you look at the way we describe FTE, the number's a little bit different, but according to the state library, our full-time equivalent is 16.55. And Simsbury is 18.53 and Farmington is 22.94. Windsor's 18.61. So we are less than, than the libraries around us. And um, I wanted to thank Leah for bringing up the state report because we do have good data points. And you're right, Bev, it is hard to compare because you, you really can't even compare apples to apples because we all run our libraries so differently. So mm -hmm. services and, you know, you know, we're a very high service um, library. Uh, our programming is second to none. Women's History Month, I, I was asking around, I think we're the only ones that have a slate of programs for Women's History Month. So um, there's a lot of points that we can um, talk about with that as well. Yep. I'd also like to add one thing, just because um, that after I, we, that email, I realized one aspect of your question I didn't, that wasn't answered was about, you said something about 2010. So you were looking for the trajectory and we actually have increased our hours in that period. If you remember, we, um, we were not open on um, Mondays at McMahon uh, a few years ago, actually. We mm -hmm. were not open on Mondays. And we were not open on Saturdays at Prosser in the summer, mm -hmm. which is when I first right. started. So we actually have added hours in the last decade 
and and didn't really um, increase the staffing much or, or if at all. So that's just one thing. One thing I forgot to put in there, and I'm like, oh yeah. So I also asked about volunteers that you didn't respond to, and and I don't know if you still have a lot of volunteers or if that's pretty much uh, faded out with uh, COVID. So we don't have any volunteers um, currently, but I should note that when I started, there was volunteers that were doing library work. Mm -hmm. uh, there was volunteers who were doing cataloging. There was volunteers who were doing uh, technical processing. Um, and I, I think that led to one of the problems in terms of all the inconsistencies that we were seeing um, across the library. So a lot of that work should be done by staff. Um, also, you know, with the volunteers, we, we would have delays in getting things done and, um, you know, having these processes done in a timely fashion. Um, and the other point I'm blanking right now, but we somehow found, oh, from the, the town of Bloomfield budget books, an old one. Um, and our staffing has actually gone down. We've lost since 2010, we've lost a few um, FTEs um, in the numbers. Um, and so we've had staffing go down, use go up, the advent of um, digital technologies and everything that incorporates. So uh, there's quite a few trends that have worked against the library um, that we're hoping to reverse quickly um, before we have our new buildings. And Again, our statistics are showing that we're getting, you know, we, we passed 7,000 library card holders and we're still adding between 50 and 70 new users a month. Okay. Um, Patrick? Uh, thank you, Ava. Thank you, Elizabeth. Just a couple of quick things. I know you sent an email around, uh, out around a pop-up at the uh, Bloomfield High School Library. And I was just wondering if there's anything to update on that, because I thought that was such a good idea. Yes. So Nicole and Heidi met with two members from Bloomfield Public Schools to talk about specifically pop-ups. And then Maxine, Ava, and I met with a member of the Library Building Committee, who's also um, a member of Bloomfield Public Schools, to talk about taking that a complete step further and us actually being embedded in the schools for all of next school year, um, which would allow us to keep more materials. It would allow us to directly interact with more students and teachers to show them everything that the library has to offer to students and their families. Um, and it would just be a natural fit. And further, the schools don't currently have um, professional librarians in those spaces. So it, it would, I mean, we would be hitting so many home runs in terms of serving this very important demographic. Um, so we have another meeting this Friday, I believe. Um, yes, this Friday morning um, to discuss that. And we're hoping we'll have some um, real takeaways to share rather soon. And Maxine, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. No, I think you, you pretty much covered it all. So I think that we're really trying very hard to build a strong foundation and partnership with Bloomfield Public Schools as just a natural um, way that we do business and, and, and work with um, supporting the town and the students that are within our town. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Uh, thank you for that. Um, just with regard to the budget meetings and so forth, I, I think I have no issue going to those. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to the last council meeting and I have a conflict this Thursday because I'm out of town. Um, but going forward from there, I should be able to attend a lot more. I think one of the things that would really help me is if I could just have some of the most important talking points that we want to get across. If we could just have a maybe a one or two page bullet list of just things that I could be sure I bring up relative to the budget, to the numbers that we've just been talking about. And I know, Elizabeth, you did send out another email, which I didn't get through the whole thing yet, but you gave the updated stats as of the end of January, 2022. So we could use, you know, things like that. But, you know, the time is limited with the council. You know, you get three minutes and I'm sure during the budget meetings, it'll be about the same. So I want to just make sure that I'm hitting the best and the most important points. 
So I think it would really help me. I could certainly go up there and, you know, talk off the top of my head, but I don't really want to do that. I want to just have factual information in front of me that I could, you know, go through cons- that we could use that's consistent and in a way that gets the message across. So if there's a way we could just develop, you know, maybe five or six bullet points and some of the numbers that go with that. And I think that will make, it'll demonstrate the true need that we have. Cause uh, you know, I think it, it does have to get through to the council and we wanna make sure we do that. You know, I also, I'm happy to reach out to council members individually, you know, and, and pass along that, the message so that they're aware of it. And um, I think, you know, the upcoming meetings certainly, uh, you know, we'll be able to attend uh, those that are on the budget schedule, even in person, which is great. And again, I just wanted to follow up on Bev's comments. I just also wanted to add my support for the masking optional stuff and um, also the, um, you know, in-person programming that's happening and also the opening, uh, changing of the hours uh, back to 10 o'clock. And to Chris's point about uh, having both live, and maybe you said this too, Elizabeth, so that both Prosser and Wintonberry are on the same schedule. Because I know in the past, the Wintonberry Library didn't have nearly as many opened hours or open days as the Prosser. And I think it's it's important that both of the branches have the same schedules or at least similar, close schedules. So I think that's good news too. So uh, thank you both for that. And um, I think for right now, that's all I, I wanted to bring up. Thank you, Ava. Oh, sure. I had one, one more question. Yeah, Bev, go ahead. Um, is there any, um, any thought of having live meetings of our library board? I feel um, very like I don't know some of the people anymore. It's it's hard for me. Um, I'm not. I, I I don't mind computers, but I, I don't get that that same feeling as I get when I actually see people in person. Yeah, we, we one problem is that Prosser doesn't really have a space. Um, yeah. But we could, if the board wanted to, do something at McMahon Wittenbury. Why doesn't Crosser have a space? Well, the community room is still, we could meet in the community room, it's concrete. So after the flood, everything was ripped out and it still is not. Uh, oh, it's not fixed. No. I didn't know that. I and believe it, our last meeting uh, right before COVID was March, 2020 and we met at McMahon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So right. I, I think that they offer a space that we can utilize as well. If we deem it necessary to meet in, you know, in person, I'm definitely willing to do that as well. And I um, mm-hmm. echo Bev's sentiments about really wanting to meet with the, um, the board. I think we would have to find a way to maybe have a bigger space at McMahon. Because mm-hmm. um, we were practically sitting at each other's laps at, at that table in the back. <laughs> So, not that that isn't fun, but um, we, we do need a bit bigger space, especially for those of us who are still um, somewhat antsy about exposure and who have, you know, underlying conditions where we just have to be careful. I will be sticking with the model that we see from Japan and China and Korea and other places where masks are worn very frequently during flu, flu season all the time. And most of the year, very frequently because of pollution and other things, where masks are considered a mark of respect, not just for yourself, but for those that you're protecting by wearing it. So I just ordered two more heavy duty 99 equivalents, but I still have to be careful. So we, we can think about that, but I think we need, a, we need more than that one table in the back that really was not set up for a bunch of people, mm. especially some people who kind of swing their feet under the table. For those of us who are short, that's pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> are there any other town buildings where we could um, we could meet? If they're uh, available. Maybe use space at 330 Park. That would have larger spaces um, and a newer HVAC system. 
So uh, I could <laughs> look into that. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. And uh, mm -hmm. I certainly um, understand people that continue, want to continue wearing masks. Um, it, you know, they, they're optional. And if people need to wear a mask, that's fine too. But I think they've pretty much discovered that if you wear a mask, you are protected pretty well, even if the person six feet away does not have a mask. But I think staying further away is important. So we do need a bigger space. Yeah. Yeah, because once, once it's six feet away and I wear an extremely high grade mask, then, then that's, that's definitely a possibility. Well, <clears throat> we could start that way. Maybe we can go outside. We have done that previously at Prosser. I think we actually took one of our pictures at, outside at Prosser. Um, but yeah, that's, and um, we, we would also need to ask um, Mary Beth or somebody at 3.30 to ensure that we have one of their carts because um, that way we would be able to record the meeting. Increasingly, that seems to be a requirement. That it, you know, and it, it's also a way for people who can't attend all of the meetings in town, um, who can't leave, who are home, homebound, who are ill, whatever, to be able to watch the meetings as, as much as people who mm -hmm. can go outside. And I know that they have a cart with a laptop because I take a class from 3.30 and they just roll it in. We have the class and they roll it out. So, you know, I know the technology is available in town. Hopefully we'd be able to do that as well. This oh. is an interesting thing. I'm kind of actually glad you brought this up, Ava, because <laughs> I'm thinking about all the technology in the new building and mm -hmm. new buildings. And I thinking with your comment, maybe we should lean into some of these Zoom room type of things, at okay. least in our conference room for our board meetings so that we can more easily record them and stream them. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely move in that. I was thinking of it anyway, but now I'm, more sure that, that we want to include that? Well, I think there are a lot of us who have started participating in a lot of events at the library who for a, a zillion reasons didn't before. And having that possibility has been great, especially when it's snowing or, you know, you know what it's like when there's a meeting at 330 Park, you can drive around for an hour looking for a parking spot. Whereas if you can go to line dancing class on Zoom, it, that has some other advantages. <laughs> no, no one has to have their camera on. So, you know, there, I think Elizabeth is quite right that now that people have seen all the possibilities, they're going to want them to continue. I do. People who are homebound certainly do. Um, you know, there, there are loads of reasons to expand service as long as, as long as we have enough staff to do it and the equipment. So certainly when we move into the new buildings where we have the chance now to say we need the drops, we need you know the the coverage, all of those things. This this is the time to do it. So yeah, I I agree, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Um, One more question. Sure. Who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Can I ask where we are uh, with the request for the vehicles, the bookmobile and the uh, vehicle to go and back and forth? Um, I, my suggestion might be to, I think the town has been very interested in buying a, an electric vehicle. Um, and I wonder if that would be a good request for that vehicle that goes back and forth between libraries. But I still don't know where we are on that. I, I got lost somewhere in that. So there was a lot of moving parts. It was challenging for us to keep up to, but the bookmobile and the staff vehicle are both part of the CIP requests. And I'm thinking that that booklet of all of the town's requests is going to be unleashed Thursday night after Stanley is done presenting. Okay. So the, the bookmobile and the, elect, the electronic bookmobile and the staff vehicle, and then the digital technologies and the staff realignment. So we have four major things that we're asking for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We were actually thinking that the electric, the bookmobile would be an electric or a hybrid, but I actually love the idea of the <laughs> fleet vehicle being electric now. So that would be cool. Thank you. <laughs> so is, Elizabeth, is that, is that part of your budget request? Yes. Okay. 
All right, like Bev, I, I was a little lost there with, um, you know, where we were with that, whether that was through it, the whole town or specifically a library budget request. So um, as per the town manager and the finance director, we did the budget modifications for mm -hmm. the digital technology um, and the staff realignment and then capital improvement projects, which is where he's also hoping to get ARPA funds um, through are the two vehicles. Okay, thank you. And Todd, thank you for asking for clarification. I will also make sure to send the relevant documentation in a clear format. There was a lot of it. Um, maybe I'll put it together in one PDF. So it's just one document sequential order. Um, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Yeah, no, thank you. And as long as we're having this conversation, um, Elizabeth mentioned the lead meeting um, with the consultant who's doing that for both new libraries and people from TSKP. And then some of us went through Zoom. One of the things that's um, absolutely being looked at for the new buildings, and it's just a question of how many, will be EV charging stations. So those would also be available if there's staff vehicle that's electric, if the bookmobile is, is a, an electric or hybrid vehicle, there would be the charging stations to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm on oh, it again. Do we need to vote about the masks or is it up to Elizabeth and uh, to decide that? Yep. Uh, I, I don't know how every, every, I've heard a few people respond but I don't know how every, everyone else feels about it. I think that's um, Elizabeth's purview. Um, I do too, but yeah. Okay, great. And I oh. think the town manager has given you that option, yes? So the other town buildings have already gone mask optional. We've been following the Board of Ed, um, but after seeing Crack's correspondence, and I think the Board of Ed also sent an email, uh, it's, I believe, March 28th. Um, for them so essentially can we decide on a date here and now what what do we think to go mask optional the 14th is monday monday the next monday is the 21st i think that's up to you okay um when when you're confident that your staff has enough warning that they can decide how they they want to manage I think that would be my only caveat that um, the staff absolutely needs to be able to wear masks if that's their comfort level. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So mask optional, we will still have masks for anybody who wants them, um, both for the staff and the public on hand at all service points. Um, and anybody who wants to wear a mask is, is encouraged to do so. Um, we just won't be policing it in any way. Right. Are you having a staff meeting tomorrow, Elizabeth? Yeah. What day? Thursday. 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 <laughs> Thursday. Thursday. Maybe there could be a collaborative approach and just check in with the staff and get the pulse of what they believe. But I, I do think that yeah. um, just go with their comfortability and, and go from there because it is optional. So um, you're not saying that they uh, cannot wear it or have to wear it. So um, it's really their comfortability as to when to start and, and just getting their heads wrapped around what service would look like and things of that nature. Yeah, we did introduce the concept. And at first we were seeing April 4th to coincide with the new hours. Um, but now that we're seeing it fall down around us, it seems prudent to do it sooner. I can tell you that there absolutely will be staff who still continue to wear masks throughout. Um, so you, you'll probably see um, both mask wearers and non-mask wearers, and then some people who wear it if we're busy. Um, so different blends of that. Yeah, Absolutely. I would also mention that um, the few times I have ventured out, without exception, at the dentist, at the doctor's office, having blood work, I have been harassed by people who don't wear masks, including one person who made kind of a move toward me until I whipped out my phone and said, you can do whatever you want on a video to the police. So I think that's something you need to be cognizant of. There are some people who, for whatever reason, seem to feel that everyone has to do things their way. I'm perfectly happy if someone does something different as long as I can do what, what, what I prefer. Um, everybody I think has to be made quite clear to them that 
everyone has to be respectful to the other guy's choice. Well, probably I'm surprised about that. Pardon me? I, I'm, I'm surprised about that. I've, I've been out with, with a mask up until today. And I've not had any problems at all in doctor's offices or labs or anywhere or stores. Maybe it's because um, I'm not, maybe because you're taller than me. I'm not that much taller anymore. I used to be, but I'm shrinking. Yeah, but I shrank too. <laughs> I'm melting. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I'm just saying, I think you're, you're, those experiences are, are a little unique, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just, I don't know. I don't, maybe I've been lucky. Yeah. Well, maybe I just don't look physically daunting enough when I'm, when I'm out and about, which is almost never. Okay. So, um, Elizabeth, I, I don't know. I think we've just kind of bled into old business. Was there more that you wanted to talk about <laughs> since we're at old business um, having to do with the budget and ARPA funds or whatever? You, you want to um, go ahead with that? I just want to make sure the board uh, is um, understanding of everything. And again, I'm going to put together a document to send out and um, Chris, Alice, and I are going to work on talking points um, because there's so many and we'll try to get really good ones. Um, and we might add some anecdotes as well because we get such good feedback from our public. Yeah. Um, and I think that that always goes the furthest. So um, we'll, we'll do our best to get some, some good stuff. And then if, there's, if you want to give comments and there's something about the library that you like the best, reach out to us too, and we can develop that talking point um, as well. Okay. And also, if you don't feel comfortable giving testimony, um, you can always email the council um, yeah. as well. So it, it doesn't have to necessarily be, um, you know, front and center, but front and center is the best, but emails are also great. Okay. Um... Here we are. So is there any other old business anyone would like to discuss? Okay. Um, actually, Elizabeth, is, is there anything that you would need from us? I know that you're putting some of the um, library documents in the materials that are being given to the council. And there was a question of a couple of slight wording changes. Is that something we would need to act on or, or are you all set? I think we're all set. Okay. For the most part. Okay. Well, everything not, everything right. went to the publisher today, so or yesterday. Okay. So we're as set as I think we're going to be okay. for now. Literally set. Okay. So um, is there any other old business anyone would like to discuss? Hearing none, let's move on to new business. Um, first item is to consider and take action regarding the Connecticut Library Association intellectual freedom statement against censorship. Um, Elizabeth? So I just pulled it up on the screen um, in the face of the increasing amount of challenges to library books and library programs um, across the United States the Connecticut Library Association issued an intellectual freedom mm -hmm. statement against censorship. And I know um, some of our colleagues uh, had their boards uh, vote um, to endorse it. And I thought it would be something important to bring up to this body as well um, to think about moving forward with endorsing it as well. Okay. I, I tend to agree. I think that um, the people who oppose um, information being disseminated to everyone because they don't particularly like it or want to read it um, tend to be very vocal. And I, I think it would be good if we were as well. There's a certain amount of you know strength in numbers um, discussion. Anyone? Um, one one way or the other? I'd, I'd like to say. Yeah. Very, very quickly, I, you know, while I have always been the type where you 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 don't think you would ever have to have something of this nature, um, you know, put into uh, code or uh, uh, some sort of regulation, you know, or or notice, um, 
I think with the the atmosphere uh, of many places, and I and certainly not the town of Bloomfield, but with many places, uh, you do. And so being proactive and um, you know having um, this uh, notice put out, uh, I think is is something that we we should do. And as you said, um, uh, Ava, um, where people who uh, who are, are against, you know, you know, information, truth, you know, are very vocal in, in wanting to to squash it. I think this is the way for us to be vocal, um, you know, in a way that you know is certainly isn't uh, confrontational, but you know, it lets people know where we stand. That we stand for you know, uh, the free exchange of information and books and, and knowledge. And um, I, I think it's a, a wonderful idea. I think it's a great idea. Uh, and I sure, I want to, um, you know, say thanks to Elizabeth for, for bringing it before the board and giving us an opportunity, um, you know, to talk about it and to, and to put it into action. Thank you. Um, would someone like to make a motion? that we... I, I do have a quick question. Yeah. Um, sure. I, ec I echo what um, Todd just referenced, but I also wonder, um, and it, it definitely shows our support, and so I'm, I'm in favor of endorsing it, but I wonder what does it look like um, once we endorse it? Do we post it in our, in our library? Where is it going to be visible so that it shows that we are in um, solidarity with um, the Connecticut Library Association? is in um, solidarity with, because you said this is across the United States, correct? Correct. Oh, just, okay, so it's the CLA, okay. This specific statement is the Connecticut Library Association mm -hmm. um, approach to what's going on and it's already happening in Connecticut. Okay. So will we be posting it or, or is it online? So how do we, how would our community know that we are endorsing this? We could highlight it in our newsletter and again on social media. Okay, because I think that that's the big plug um, so that we are voicing that we are in support of this and that our public knows that we're doing this. And this could also be a link or posting on the website mm -hmm. so that it, it becomes part of what people are seeing as, as they're looking at the website all the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good point. I think it says it all in the very last paragraph that starts with, we pledge to stand with. So, you know, we are indicating as a board that we support the Connecticut Library Association's intellectual freedom statement against censorship. And I think we could leave it up to Elizabeth as to where it should be made available. I, it doesn't sound like it's anything that we have to make available, but it, we are supporting it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so would, would someone like to move that we, res we um, are standing in support with this statement? Endorse. Maybe endorse, I'm not sure of the verb. Um, I'll make a motion that uh, we uh, move to endorse the Connecticut Library Association uh, statement on, and I, you know, my phone, so. Okay, um, would someone like to second? I'll second that, Ava. Okay, and Patrick seconds. Okay, so um, this, this is where we would discuss. So is there, um, you know, I certainly don't want anybody to, to not have the chance to be a part of the conversation. Anyone else like to um, discuss this further? No? Okay, and certainly we can always return. Okay, so... Um, then I'll move the motion. All in favor of um, Todd's motion to endorse? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? We still have a quorum? Yes, okay. So the motion passes. Um, next item would be the transition to mask optional, which I think we pretty much covered. Okay, um, next item. I have actually added an item. Um, 
the staff is already engaged in all of the work that nobody sees to get ready to move. I, I think there seems to be a perception that sometime down the road, people are going to, you know, get ready to move and the library will go to a swing space. And people seem to think that this is about a year or so away. Right now, the soft date is September 1st to be out of both libraries. So that means the entire collection has been, is being reassessed so that you don't move things that you would then just get rid of. Um, cleaning out old files, um, things that are in terrible condition so they can't move, move with the library. All, all kinds of um, work that the library staff is doing. That's why they're you know, having that one one day every so often where they're, they're cl literally cleaning out the libraries. Um, I don't know, I thought it might be nice if we supported the staff on that in some way, maybe, you know, making sure that there are bottles of water, making sure that there are snacks when people are lugging furniture around and dragging out old books and all of that stuff. So I, I just thought I would bring that up and, and see what everyone thought about that, you know, until they moved to the swing space. We don't even have the swing space yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're trying to move without knowing how big a space they're moving to, you know, maximizing the amount of stuff that they can bring, but some things you can't. So, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, uh, why, are they it's, why are they moving furniture? I'm not understanding that. I would assume they'd be going through, um, books, papers, uh, that makes sense. It's like kind of clean house here, but I, I don't understand why anybody would be moving big items at this point. Yeah, it's more organizing, getting rid of, going through decades of things um, okay. and orchestrating with public works to do the bigger stuff. But that being right. said, um, as all of you know, the third floor does not have elevator access. Um, so I see Mr. Silouac up there uh, who has been lugging things from the third floor down, specifically technology related uh, dinosaur stuff. So it's a little so bit there is there is heavy work then. <laughs> there is the up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. Not for everybody, but for, you know, and Chris is one of those people. <laughs> And it just seems like awful, grubby, hot, yucky work that I'm thrilled I don't have to do. I've been through move. It was not fun. I've been through two, actually. And you'd be amazed the stuff that's hiding. And, <laughs> you know, aside from the fact that librarians are more about conserving than throwing out most of the time. And that kind of, over time, means you have corners and closets and little spaces full of stuff. And this is the time to not keep it. So, Ava, am I, am I hearing that uh, with what um, Elizabeth said that we just really need to provide uh, water and snacks for Chris? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I just, I just thought it might be nice for people when they're doing all of this stuff that's pretty, pretty yucky work and kind of thankless. And invisible, you know, people people don't realize that all of this stuff goes on behind the scenes, that this might be a way to just kind of show our appreciation and support the staff and say, hey, you know, have a little snack, have a bottle of water while you're dragging stuff around. You know, we are thinking of you, even though we're not moving it for you. I don't know. Would it be so difficult to That's provide? Say. Oh, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Yeah. I don't know. Could we could we provide lunch on those days? Some pizza? I don't know. Does everybody like pizza? I, I don't know. I don't know what we can do, but something would be appropriate mm -hmm. on those days that uh, people are, are doing some extra physical labor in the morning and, and might uh, appreciate some show of support. Yeah. Well, maybe we could just um, say we would like to do this, but kind of leave how to manage that up to Elizabeth and the folks mm -hmm. you. like, you know, Chris, Chris gets an, an ice cream on a stick 
somebody <laughs> else might want chips and a bottle of water, that kind of thing. You know, what, whatever is appropriate. Sure, that's a good idea. Okay, so if everybody likes that, maybe somebody could make a motion. Elizabeth, okay. do you have any sense about how, how much loot you would need to be able to, you know, make a start on this at least? I'm thinking right now it's it's one it's bad enough, but when it starts getting hot and you're really pushing during the summer, I have been on the third floor of Prosser mm. during the summer. Mm. It's not an amusing not place to be. A special place up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I think that's a great idea, and um, I might send a little survey out to staff to see what they would like, um, and then move from there so I can report back. Okay. Um, so Good idea. Would, would the rest of the board like to do that? We'll find out from Elizabeth um, what would be the best idea, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Good everyone idea. would love a snack survey in their email box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, I just had a quick question. So as people are cleaning things out, I mean, where do we have a great big dumpster sitting in the parking lot and you just, you know, toss so it in there? Or where does all the stuff go? This is an awkward conversation um, in that there's a town manager policy on the books that says that we are supposed to send the, an email to the Board of Ed asking if they want stuff first and then send it around to department heads and if there's any financial value. And it just does not work for the library in any way. And plus, we have the friends who sell books that were once, so it's, it's um, uh, Stanley directed me to try to come up with a better policy, um, especially during this time, because we've all, I asked the question, where are we supposed to throw stuff out? And I was told that 330 Park just used the dumpsters. Mm -hmm. And then when I followed up, I was given this policy. Um, and so uh, I will, I'm going to send that policy to the board so you can read it because it's just, <laughs> it's, it's one of those policies that's very bureaucratic and makes things just harder for us. It sounds, um, it sounds like it's an antiquated policy. I mean, really, who uh, would want? I mean, 330 Park just went through a whole new, you know, got a whole new building and got all new furnishings. So why would they want something that's 50 years old from, you know, the library? Um, I can't imagine, yeah, that anybody would want it. So interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess my only thought was if you're, as you go through stuff, like are they, say you're going through files, are you actually then packing those files into a, a moving box to get them ready? Or you're just going through them and then leaving everything where it is. And it seems like that might be double work then to later on to get ready for swing space. So, so we, how is that all? We have boxes for document removal that come once a month. So we've been getting rid of stuff as per the Connecticut State Library's guidelines about what we need to keep and what we need to get rid of. The vast majority of stuff that's just been stored over the years does not have any value. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also things that we might want to keep digitizing those documents. And we have that ability at both locations. Yeah. So that's why we're trying to start now so staff can get an idea um, of what we have. And we've also, um, something that we did with um, technology was we worked with public works to just have a, you know, big stuff removed. Chris, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. And then we also connected with, um, Chris, I'm going to hand this over to you because you're the one that did the in-between with um, the technology and with some of the furniture that we went out. Yeah, well, we've traditionally, as a town, we've worked with Green Monster Recycling for a lot of electronics, which there's a lot of. <laughs> yeah. um, and they used to pick them up, and now we have to deliver. So sometimes our public works department will take this huge load. Um, but beyond that, we've worked with Habitat Restore, and we've given them old furniture that we can't use anymore that they think is worth uh, reselling. So that's been good. And we've also talked about Again, there's not a lot, lot of value, but there are a few things where we might put it out to the rest of the library systems if they want it. Because our feeling was with like your Pat, Patrick, 330 is new and the schools tend to have better stuff than we do. <laughs> uh, and, and some of this type of stuff anyway. So I just feel like maybe that's where we would um, shop some of it around. 
Gotcha. And I also wanted to note that when we reached out to Habitat, they came and they didn't even want our, our stuff. They're like, oh, this is too old. They, so <laughs> they only took a small fraction of what we had. And yeah. then they were like, this is garbage. So again, that whole policy was just not in sync with the reality of the situation. Yeah. Okay, that's that's good. So at least things are actually leaving the building. I thought, you know, things are just, you were going through piles and putting one over here, one over there. But it sounds like things are actually leaving the facilities and, and getting getting taken care of. So that's great. Yeah. And tomorrow night we are interviewing owners reps. And apparently the owners rep is also supposed to help with this process. So helping us identify what we need to move, what needs to go in storage, what needs to be with us. Mm -hmm. um, also talking to some of our colleagues who have gone through this process. Um, a lot of them um, point to the direction of the less you take, the better, because, you know, we want to start with clean spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went and actually looked up that policy. Uh, no. I'm going to email the policy to the board for, you know, and that's the thing because um, the town manager asked us to like rewrite it, but I'm like, Oh my, we don't even have the time to do that right now. Like we're, we are in the process. We are already going through these, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, the friends sell our stuff. So there's just a lot of things where the library is kind of separate from what may happen at town hall and, and through 30 park. Sounds like that might be a job for admin and education subcommittee. So maybe that policy should be referred to whomever that chair is these days. I forget who it is, but, you know, that policy should, uh, you know, be going through that committee and be revised, you know, and then the town manager could, you know, uh, decide who needs to have input to it. Yeah. There's one part in there where it says every time you get rid of something that could have value, you're supposed to email all department heads. And I've been here for just over two years and I can tell you, I've never received one email. <laughs> so it's, and I know people have I'm been shocked. throwing things out. <laughs> I know. So um, it, it's one of these policies that's there, but it's kind of a dead policy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So um, I think you should just keep keep doing what you're doing. That's something to consider later. It, it was not clear to me when I read it exactly how that policy even came to be. So I, that that might be above our pay grade. <laughs> they, they, they may have to work out. When I read that policy, it looked like one of those times one person did something and they wrote a policy about that one person <laughs> as opposed to thinking yeah. about, you know, the actual yeah. systems at play. Well, and most of town hall the departments are really more clerical. They, they have loads of files and loads of clerical things to manage. A library is completely different. Mm -hmm. and it, you know, the town, town hall has its own system for managing e-waste. They're not having a tag sale in the parking lot. <laughs> you know? So I, I really don't think it, it applies in any practical way. Okay. I've completely lost my place in my agenda. Here we go. Okay, so that's um, that was the only thing I had. So does anyone have any additional new business they would like to discuss? Sorry, Eva, I thought you, did you ask, did you want or ask for a motion on the um, sort of the snack and water thing? Was that, or am I, did I hear that wrong? Do we need a motion on that? Um, I think we were going to wait at this point. Oh, um, just after Elizabeth the was going to um, let us know because if she's gotcha. not sure what she needs, then you know okay. we yeah. don't have a guideline. I got so, it. I, yeah, got I think we're just going to wait. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. I know we, we've been kind of rambling through, through the, the um, agenda, less formally. Okay. Do do we still do we still have a quorum of people who can vote on the minutes? One, I, two, three. Uh oh. We don't. No, have, we do. We've still got five. And, and I Todd think is here. That's five. right. So. Only Leah's yeah. not here. I think we'll be okay. But I think Bev needs. Was I was absent for one. Some, right. One them, so, yeah. yeah. Then Just me. one. Yeah. And, and then Patrick was. I was absent on January. I think Todd was going to be absent on one of those, too. So, I think we're fine. Okay. If, if we get to one that we don't have enough votes, then that one we could we could wait. So, um, 
we need to approve the minutes of the December 14th, 2021 regular meeting. Um, are there any corrections to those minutes that anyone has? No? Okay, would um, someone like to move that those minutes from December 14th, 2021 be approved? So moved. Okay, Patrick, someone want a second? I'll second. Okay, Todd seconds. Okay, all in favor of accepting the December 14th, 2021 minutes as um, written? Aye. Aye. And I'll actually vote. So that's three, Todd. Aye. Okay, that's four. Bev, were you there for the- No, December? I'm going to have to abstain. That's the one you're abstaining. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, yeah, four. four. Okay, we're good. So th those minutes are accepted. Now, um, approval of the minutes of January 11th, 2022. Is there anyone who will need to abstain on the January 11th minutes? Patrick? If I do. Yeah, Patrick will abstain. Anybody else? Okay, then we could go ahead. Um, are there any corrections to the January 11th, 2022 minutes? Okay, hearing none. Um, would someone like to move that we accept the January 11th minutes as written. So moved. Okay, um, moved okay. by Deb, seconded by Max. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. One, two, three. Todd? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's four. Okay, those minutes are approved. Oh. Then we have the January 18th, 2022 minutes of the special meeting of the Board of Trustees. <sighs> Any corrections to those minutes? Is it January 18th or 19th? Yeah. Uh-oh. The minutes say the 19th. Okay, it's probably the yeah, 19th. Yeah, they do. Oh, was it? Let me look. Because I don't want I don't want to have to do this twice. Hmm. January 19th. It was a Wednesday. It was a right. it was So a it's Wednesday. the 19th. Yes. Okay. So um so any corrections to the January 19th, 2022 special meeting minutes. No corrections. Okay, would someone like to move to um, accept the January 19th minutes as written? Max? Aye. Yeah. Max moves. Somebody want a second? Second. Second. Okay, was that? I think that was Bev. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Um, Aye. Aye. Minutes? Aye. Okay, anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay, those are approved. And then we're up to the February 8th, 2022 minutes. Have to abstain. And Todd is going to abstain um, because he was not able to attend. Okay, are there any corrections to the February 8th minutes? Okay, hearing none, would someone like to move that those minutes be accepted as written? So moved. Okay, Patrick moves, somebody want to second. second? Max seconds. Okay, all in favor of accepting the February 8th minutes? Aye. Uh, okay. And Todd abstains. Anyone opposed? Nope. Okay. February 8th minutes are accepted. Whew, that's really good. That list was getting up there. Thank you to whoever it was who put only six people on the library board. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid somebody has a cold. We're in trouble. Okay. Chris. Are there any members of the public present and who would like to speak? Nope. Okay. Anybody on the board like to comment, board comments? No? I think oh, we kind of used them all during the <laughs> Yeah, we did. The only comment I'll make, and I believe, and again, this was already discussed, is going back to having an in-person meeting. So I'll just, I was going to save that to this point in the, uh, in the meeting, but 
Uh, I believe uh, Bev brought that up earlier about us returning to an in-person meeting. And, you know, I do believe that it's getting close to that time where we need to have that option available. I, I believe that as well. And we really need to move forward finding space so that we can accomplish right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, once it gets warm out, maybe we can. Um... Yeah, but it could rain. We can't, we can't plan on that. Yeah, true. But we could have we could have it with a swing space available, as it were. Okay. Um, anything else for the good of the country? Okay. Would somebody like to move that we adjourn? Move that we adjourn. Okay. So Todd second. Moves, Bev seconds, and we do not need to vote on that. Okay. This this is actually a really constructive meeting. I think we got a lot of good stuff done. Yes. So thank you, everyone. And I know that the budget stuff is a lot less fun than some things, but it's really important. Okay, so um, barring any immediate or 